Consecration Having attained to the viewpoint which puts you into the right relations with the world and with your fellow men, the next step is consecration. And consecration in its true sense simply means obedience to the soul. You have that within you which is ever impelling you toward the upward and advancing way, and that impelling something is the divine principle of power. You must obey it without question. No one will deny the statement that if you are to be great, the greatness must be a manifestation of something within. Nor can you question that this something must be the very greatest and highest that is within. It is not the mind or the intellect or the reason. You cannot be great if you go no farther back for principle than to your reasoning power. Reason knows neither principle nor morality. Your reason is like a lawyer in that it will argue for either side. The intellect of a thief will plan robbery and murder as readily as the intellect of a saint will plan a great philanthropy. Intellect helps us to see the best means and manner of doing the right thing, but intellect never shows us the right thing. Intellect and reason serve the selfish man for his selfish ends, as readily as they serve the unselfish man for his unselfish ends. Use intellect and reason without regard to principle, and you may become known as a very able person, but you will never become known as a person whose life shows the power of real greatness. There is too much training of the intellect and reasoning powers, and too little training in obedience to the soul. This is the only thing that can be wrong with your personal attitude when it fails to be one of obedience to the principle of power. By going back to your own center, you can always find the pure idea of right for every relationship. To be great and to have power, it is only necessary to conform your life to the pure idea as you find it in the great within. Every compromise on this point is made at the expense of a loss of power. This you must remember. There are many ideas in your mind which you have outgrown, and which, from force of habit, you still permit to dictate the actions of your life. Cease all this. Abandon everything you have outgrown. There are many ignoble customs, social and other, which you still follow, although you know they tend to dwarf and belittle you and keep you acting in a small way. Rise above all this. I do not say that you should absolutely disregard conventionalities or the commonly accepted standards of right and wrong. You cannot do this. But you can deliver your soul from most of the narrow restrictions which bind the majority of your fellow men. Do not give your time and strength to the support of obsolete institutions, religious or otherwise. Do not be bound by creeds in which you do not believe. Be free. You have perhaps formed some sensual habits of mind or body. Abandon them. You still indulge in distrustful fears that things will go wrong, or that people will betray you or mistreat you. Get above all of them. You still act selfishly in many ways and on many occasions. Cease to do so. Abandon all these, and in place of them, put the best actions you can form a conception of in your mind. If you desire to advance and you are not doing so, remember that it can be only because your thought is better than your practice. You must do as well as you think. Let your thoughts be ruled by principle and then live up to your thoughts. Let your attitude in business, in politics, in neighborhood affairs, and in your own home be the expression of the best thoughts you can think. Let your manner toward all men and women, great and small, and especially to your own family circle, always be the most kindly, gracious, and courteous you can picture in your imagination. Remember your viewpoint. You are a god in the company of gods and must conduct yourself accordingly. The steps to complete consecration are few and simple. You cannot be ruled from below if you are to be great. You must rule from above. Therefore, you cannot be governed by physical impulses. 
You must bring your body into subjection to the mind. But your mind, without principle, may lead you into selfishness and immoral ways. You must put the mind into subjection to the soul, and your soul is limited by the boundaries of your knowledge. You must put it into subjection to that over-soul, which needeth no searching of the understanding, but before whose eyes all things are spread. That constitutes consecration. Say, I surrender my body to be ruled by my mind. I surrender my mind to be governed by my soul, and I surrender my soul to the guidance of God. Make this consecration complete and thorough, and you have taken the second great step in the way of greatness and power. End of chapter 8